In this video, I'm going to be talking about a concept that I picked up from the excellent Dungeon World game by Sage Cobalt Productions, and that is the idea of leaving some blank space. This is a concept that can be applied to numerous areas of RPG campaigns, from describing locations, NPCs, to mapping out your campaign world. Now, what do we mean by leaving some blank space? Well, in Dungeon World, the campaign world and all the people, settlements and other elements that inhabit it are created as the game progresses through interaction between the players on one hand and the GM on the other. In a sense, everything about the setting is a blank space until it's defined either through an adventure or by one of the between adventure rest periods that the game employs. Now, not all games have this level of improvisation when it comes to their settings, however, I think the concept of leaving yourself some blank space or room to manoeuvre is a very valid one that can benefit all campaign settings. Now, one of the traps I fell into when I GM'd my first game, Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 1st Edition, for anyone who's interested, way back in the misty abysses of time for a group of friends, was that I attempted to fully describe everything that the players came across and to detail absolutely everything everything that they could possibly come across on their adventures now not only does this create a vast amount of work for the gm but it can result in the whole experience becoming entirely too stressful looking back oh how much younger self used to agonize over all of the possible outcomes and pathways of an adventure it's practically a miracle i survived that first game and came back for more chalk it up to me being a bit of a glutton for punishment now this is not to say that preparation is bad, far from it. A certain level of preparation is required for a setting. In my opinion, if you want to maintain a level of consistency in your game, and even inspirational games like Dungeon World and Fate suggest that you record suggestions made by the players and their actions so that you can reference them in the future of the campaign or have them referred to. This creates the feeling of a living, a breathing environment rather than a static stage where the NPCs and places are shuffled on when the player characters require them and when they're packed away and forgotten once the PCs round the next bend in the road or leave the city. However, excessive preparation can be both wasteful and very stressful. You might spend an awful lot of time detailing stuff that the player characters never explore in which case your creative energies could have been better spent elsewhere. And there's always that temptation to railroad or encourage the PCs towards material that you've created, since obviously you spent time creating it, you want them to see it. However, any form of railroading, or even hinting, unless it's done really, really subtly, can lead to ill feeling, and the players having a sense that they've got no free will within the game world. Now, we're trying to encourage players to invest in the game world, invest their time, their creative energies in this RPG, so we want them to feel more, not less, involved. I think that a good middle ground is to have the broad strokes of your world and the elements that affect it on a broader scale, such as gods, world religions, large cities, races, etc., drafted out in advance, but to leave some areas deliberately blank or unexplored. In addition to saving you prep time and resulting in a less stressed out games master, it means that when the players come up with a suggestion or ask you a question about something, indicating their interest in a particular aspect of the game, that you're setting as enough um, blank areas, enough flexibility that you can add something in. For example, after exploring a cave system 50 miles from the nearby village, the wizard of the adventuring party wants to do some arcane research and asks the GM, Do I know of any other mages nearby? Looking at his map, the GM can see that the area around the cave and the village is blank. So he could easily say, Well, there was a rumour of a hermit who lived in a lonely tower built amongst the hills to the west of Little Falkton. However, no one has heard of him for years. Or, because the village and its inhabitants have not been detailed to the nth degree, perhaps, Well, you do remember hearing something of the Little Falkton villagers' herbalist, old Silas. Maybe he'd be able to help. In the above example, it never hurts to have a couple of adventure locations or NPCs, even if it's just an index card with a brief write-up on it, tucked away that you can fold into such descriptions 
and wheel out should the player characters decide to seek out this mysterious mage or visit Silas the herbalist or whatever. This can be a fun thing to do during downtime but you only need a handful and again there's no point overloading yourself with work to the extent that the game is no longer enjoyable for you. I'd advise any GMs to consider lightening their workload a bit and leaving some blank space in their campaigns. That along with a bit of listening to the players and having them tell you where the campaign direction is going can both increase the players feelings of involvement and also result in a happy GM. Both really good things for your game. Let me know what you think in the comments box below. Do you prefer a greater degree of preparation? Are you a master of the ad hoc game session? Maybe you've got some more tips related to matters discussed in this video. I look forward to reading what you write.